Formula Ford event is Damon Hill, son of Graham Hill, a missing from the front rank John Village, who's won this series in the past but has broken down on the warm-up lap. Tragic luck. And into the lead goes Andrew King, second fastest in practice, now up to Cox. All these cars are very level on performance. They all have 1,600cc Ford engines. They all have the same type of Dunlop tyre. They're basically the same cars, most of them built by Van Diemen, and they've got a maximum speed around this course of the Hangar Straight, which they're approaching now, of approaching 130 miles an hour. And the lap record, as Damon Hill is in second place, it's Andrew King leading. They're both in Van Diemen's, as are most of the drivers in this event. But we must keep a very careful eye out for young John Herbert, number three in the red car, who is in the only quest in the race. And he's in third position as they come down the hangar straight into Stowe Corner, the right-hander, absolutely flat. Herbert challenging, trying to go through on the inside and take Andrew King in the lead. And you can see the rest of them streaming through four-speed gearboxes and there are the first four absolutely together and I say again that one of the top men John Village was out of the race before it even started now they come up towards Abbey Curve the very fast left-hander with Damon Hill in the lead with Andrew King in second place and Damon Hill who has dominated motorcycle racing in his class at uh, the Brands Hatch circuit for a long, long time has moved up to Formula Ford with great success, but he's not going to be leading at the end of the first lap because it's King who goes through in the lead. Damon Hill in second place, Johnny Herbert is in third position, and the Irish driver, Rory O'Killan, in fourth place. Damon Hill, number five, with the London Rowing Club vertical stripes on his black helmet, and that's exactly the same design that is great ex-world champion father Graham Hill used to have Damon Hill has improved by leaps and bounds in driving ability and he's very much a man to watch so Damon Hill whose fastest lap in practice 138.8 8, 106.8 miles an hour was just about four tenths of a second below the lap record held by Mark Blundell and off there number 28 there is James Taylor in the Reynard, one of the few Reynards in the race. And now it's a three-man battle. And watch the red car of Johnny Herbert. And he's through, and he's taken the lead. Johnny Herbert, the ex-cart champion. And that's number three. He's only 20 years old. Comes from Maidstone. And he's now in the lead. And as a matter of interest, he's in third position in the championship. 20 points at stake for a first place. Two for a fastest lap, so you can get... 22 points, which had come in very handy for Herbert, who's leading from Damon Hill. Tucked up behind Damon Hill is Andrew King. So it's a quest leading in two Van Diemen's behind him. And Rory O'Killan in the yellow and blue car is right with them. They're coming into Woodcote now for the second time in this 10-lap race. Damon Hill in second position. Herbert leads. King third. Killan fourth. In fifth position, it's Alan Seedhouse, the man who was second in the Marlborough Challenge last year. Tremendous Formula Ford racing here. The, the, the quest out front ahead of a gaggle of Van Diemen's, and this is where drivers learn all their racecraft skill, nerve, and at Silverstone Circuit, the wide open, it's very, very hard to make a break and get away. Slipstream without any wings on these cars, they're very much affected by following a car behind where you can get dragged along the slipstream. Johnny Herbert here, out on his own at the moment, but I'm sure by the end of this next long straight down to Silverstone, Damon Hill is going to use that slipstream to drag up behind Herbert and maybe even overtake before Stowe and bring in the whole gaggle behind him. Unfortunately, there we lost, lost James Taylor, but uh, another slow start was Mark Blundell, who could well, he's moving up, he's in fact in the lead of that backpack, trying to catch Blundell, one of the new names. Now here is Blundell on the left of these cars, 18-year-old Mark Blundell, certainly one of the younger, in fact he's the second youngest driver in the race, and now on lap three it's still Herbert leading, and Herbert shaping up to make a bit of a break, if he gets a clear gap between himself and Damon Hill, 
which he certainly hasn't at the moment, he could fight clear, but Damon Hill's not letting him do so as they go into the tremendously fast Abbey curve under the bridge again, and, and still right up with them is Andrew King, and Damon Hill takes the lead as they come into Woodcote, but now Alan Seedhouse, number seven, is moving up. He's ahead of Killan, and behind Killan is Jason Elliott, who is the youngest driver in the race. That's number 11 on the left of your screen. He is 17 years old. So, and there is Jason Elliott, who is the son of John Elliott, an ex-Formula Ford driver himself. Jason, who is leading the star of tomorrow, Formula Ford Championship, in only his second year of racing at 17 years old, but Herbert retakes the lead from Damon Hill. Behind Damon Hill, number nine, Andrew King. We are on lap four in this 10-lap race, which is just under 30 miles. 2.93 miles is the circuit length at Silverstone, which is where the British Grand Prix, of course, is being held later this year. And now, absolutely together, in line abreast, they come, and King is through, Andrew King takes the lead for the first time from Damon Hill. King, who's already won one race with the fastest lap in the series this year, but is only in ninth position in the championship, so he needs those 20 points, and Damon Hill is doing his best to see that he doesn't get them. It's a Van Diemen leading the most popular car in Formula Ford, a Van Diemen second, another Van Diemen in third position, that of Alan Seedhouse, number seven. Up into fourth place has come Jason Elliott because... And there is Johnny Herbert going through a, a terrific manoeuvre. Fabulous. Herbert, one of the bravest boys in Formula Ford at the moment, and there he used the slipstream under the bridge, whipped out, dived down the inside, and really this race is between any one of these six. Without an accident, these six are going to stay together, and it's all about tactics, bravery, learning the skills. Seedhouse there nips through ahead of his teammate Andrew King, goes a bit wide, coming out of cops, loses ground, Andrew King comes back by. But really, these six are probably going to stay stuck together around Silverstone with the slipstream and could well be joined by Mark Blundell and Gary Ward, who aren't that far behind. But here, into Beckett's four abreast for third place. And they're off into the Armco, but fortunately looking to be perfectly all right and in amongst the catch fencing. Let's have a look at it again as the leader, number three, Johnny Herbert, with Damon Hill tight up behind him, goes into the tremendously fast right-hander. Now look to the left of your screen, and there he goes, off and out of the circuit altogether. That's Alan Seedhouse, of course, the man who went off, and Damon Hill, meantime has taken advantage of that situation to get past Johnny Herbert and into the lead. Now, there is a particularly interesting point about Herbert's car. He, they're on lap five, which is half distance, Damon Hill leading, Johnny Herbert second, and Johnny Herbert's quest is actually two years old, and Herbert has got a superb line into the Woodcote complex, the right-left-right right chicane, for the second time, he has taken the lead there and just rides the curbs, but he mustn't give the game away. Now Damon Hill will know exactly what the situation is, and if on the last lap Damon Hill were to be in front of Johnny Herbert as he was then, he could so easily shut the door on the 20-year-old Maidstone driver and retain the lead and win. While all this has been going on, Alan Seedhouse, who slithered off at Stowe, has rejoined the circuit and will be trying to fight his way up towards the front. I say towards the front, there is absolutely no way Formula Ford being as competitive as it is that he would ever win, but he could hopefully get up amongst the points. That would be 10th position is the lowest point scoring position. And there are the first 10 virtually in the picture with Damon Hill leading, Johnny Herbert second. This is lap six. Still Elliott in third position as they come through shortly to complete the lap. 
Herbert in the two-year-old Quest car, which makes you wonder whether all the money that is spent on new Reynards and new Van Diemens is absolutely necessary, because if Herbert can do this in a two-year-old car, it's a real testimony to his skill. Twice British champion in karts, He's yet to win a Formula Ford race in the series this year. He's shaping up well to do it. And now, Herbert and Damon Hill, as they come down to Woodcote, with Herbert doing it again, the Ray is obviously better on braking. Yes, it's always the slipstream. He's using the tactic, but Damon could well be letting him do that for a few laps. Damon's very wise. He's matured greatly as a Formula 4 driver recently. He's now really one of the leading lights in this country. He's having a look on the inside for Cops, and in fact goes through into Cops, does Damon. But Damon really is the thinking man in this pair, I believe, and with his experience, he's really looking for a major win in the near future. But Herbert, very, very quick, and at the moment, they're managing to stay clear of that little gaggle. In fact, the gaggle behind are rather holding themselves up. But there we see now Jason Elliott, the youngest man in the race, has broken away from the two guys he was with. And Jason, very talented, is slowly closing in and could well catch those leaders. So Jason Elliott, the youngest man, could well be winning this one. Lap seven, and uh, I believe there are some spots of rain down at Stowe. We've had one or two showers today, not enough to really wet the circuit, but if it holds a bit, it could dampen it. And it's not going to be as much of a problem on the standard treaded Dunlop tyres as it would be if they were on slicks, but it still could be a problem. Herbert back in the lead, and the car numbers tell you their positions in the championship. Number three, Johnny Herbert as Damon Hill. Number five, fifth in the championship. Number three, Herbert, and off goes Hill. So the co and off go the first three. And there's a wheel off, two wheel off. Now that is because it is damp down there. Just as I was saying, it's not really wet, but my goodness, it's damp. And off go Damon Hill in the lead. Off goes Johnny Herbert. And off goes the man who was in third place. And let's look at it again, Jason Elliott. Now watch Damon Hill lose it. And then Johnny Herbert's got absolutely nowhere to go. Jason Elliott in third position behind. Damon Hill spins out on the damp. And neither Herbert nor Elliott have got anywhere to go. Herbert actually almost drives round, but loses it on the rumble bars. And Elliott sees Damon Hill right in front of him. Two wheels off, the first three out. We are on lap eight, and there are only three laps to go now, including the one that they're on. And up into the lead has gone the Irish Van Diemen Works driver, Rory O'Killan, 23 years old, from Navan. The man who was in the Formula Ford final last year, and there he goes. So it's Andrew King in second place, Rory O'Killan, appropriately number one in the lead. But Rory O'Killan is not number one because of his driving in the past in this SO Championship. He's in number one because the championship leader, John Booth, who was to drive this yellow and blue Van Diemen, broke his leg of all things playing football and is not in this race. So obviously John Booth won't be too unhappy that uh, Johnny Herbert and John Village and Damon Hill are out of the race because they were in third, fourth and fifth positions. And now we need to look down the lap chart and see where Mark Blundell, number two, is in the race. Answer, he is in third position. There he is on the right of these cars. Now there is Rory O'Killan, lap eight, two laps to go. They're just coming under the bridge, approaching Woodcote. Killan leads. It is Andrew King in the Van Diemen in second position. In third place, going into Woodcote now, clearing it, but the right, left, right. In third place is Andrew King, but Mark Blundell, as the rain really starts to hammer down, is closing up fast. In fact, it's Gary Ward here we see coming through. He's come from fourth to first in half a lap, amazingly so. He's in a last year's Reynard there, and perhaps in these very greasy conditions, it's going to shoot last year's Reynard more than this year's Van Diemen's. So Gary Ward, in the same colour car as Andrew King, has shot through from fourth to now lead in these very, very greasy conditions as they come round and down to Beckett's with two and a half laps or so to go. And Gary Ward now a reasonable distance ahead of Oakalan, Blundell and Andrew King dropped to fourth. Tim, how much of a problem on standard treaded tyres is 
these cha are these changeable weather conditions in comparison with driving on slicks? Well, it is still a very great problem because they, they wear more treaded tyres if it's really raining heavily and, and fairly well-worn tyres when it's dry. So now it's raining and greasy. Blundell there slipping by into second ahead of Oakillan. And uh, it's very greasy. And in these greasy conditions, it's still as slippery as you'll find on the roads. But Blundell may be a bit down on power earlier. He looked to be dropping away from the leaders, but now in the greasy conditions, his car control, he's coming forward to challenge for the lead. Mark Blundell had a big clutch problem yesterday, was low down on the starting grid after practice for him because he had a clutch problem as a result of which the power wasn't getting through. But now he's up into second position. If he stays there, never mind if he wins, he will take the lead in the SO Championship and... Ward holds that 21-year-old Ward, number eight in the Raynard, the 1984 Raynard, significantly enough. Blundell second, O'Killan is in third place, Andrew King is in fourth place, and there they go, down into Cops. Last lap, number 45, Andy Pardo, is about to be lapped. There is Ward, who decided not to drive an 85 Raynard, as quite a lot of the drivers have decided to do because they feel, rightly or wrongly, that the 84 car is better, and Mark Blundell is certainly challenging. Now, Mark has a very distinctive helmet design. It has on it his initials, MB, and the words, Will to Win. That is because Mark's greatest fan was his grandfather, who died recently, and Mark decided to dedicate his rapidly developing career to his greatest fan, his granddad, with those words, the will to win, and look at him go. This is 18-year-old Mark Blundell. He is now on the last lap. He is in the lead with Rory O'Killan, the Irishman. It's a Van D in second place. It's a Van Diemen leading, a Van Diemen second. The first four within your sight, absolutely together, as they come out of down to Stowe Corner, Club Corner, and then from Club up to Abbey, from Abbey up to the bridge, and it looks as though Blundell has got enough of a breakaway to be able to ensure a win, unless there is some really demon breaking as they approach Woodcote in the last few yards of the last lap. 18-year-old Mark Blundell, who's already won twice this year, second in the championship, he's on his way to a minimum of 20 points, but who is going to be second? They're into Woodcote, it's Kalan on the inside, and Gary Ward has slipped down through the field. He's in third position over the line. It goes, Mark Blundell wins. Rory O'Killan is in second place. In third position, Gary Ward. And in fourth position, Andrew King. And Blundell now leads the SO Championship with six out of 15 rounds completed.